in Karlstadt and normally in the summer the river beneath me is jam-packed with log rafts on the way down to the paper and board mills between here and Gothenburg and the sea. The ice is so thick and in fact they're going to start the event on this frozen river behind me and preparations for the starting gate are being put up at the moment. It's the second round of the 1981 World Rally Drivers Championship and last night I asked Anders Kulang what was special about his own country's international event? Uh, if you take 10,000 legs in Finland on the Swedish rally, 10,000 legs it's a little faster and uh, sometimes a little more flying yams. Uh, and if you take Portugal, it's a uh, little more twisty and uh, up and down and a little more rough. So I can say Swedish rally it's uh, more like 10,000 legs and what that are between Portugal and, and Swedish are The roads are a bit narrower than the thousand legs, are they? A little bit narrow. And some say it is uh, very fast and some say it is uh, very twisty. So that's uh, changed many times also in, in the special stage. It's many junctions and uh, one, the first part of, of the stage is uh, twisty and uh, the middle is uh, fast and the end is twisty again. Mm -hmm. so that's why it's a little difficult for us to drive to change uh, driving uh, the character of the roads. Mm -hmm. Now the car, the Ascona 400, has shown itself in the last year to be extremely reliable, probably the most reliable car around. Is it going to be fast enough to uh, stay ahead of the, of the Quattro? Uh, I mean the Quattro, I must forget. Only to uh, see if I can have the play behind, that mean, will mean second. And I think that will be hard enough. I mean, that is a lot of Finns, a lot of Swedish drivers. And some, uh, I think we shall have a very hard fight. And on the, the Ascona this year, it's uh, okay. We have learned. Now? A little, little bit quicker, and we have learned a lot of things uh, last year. And uh, the car is more. Good prepared for, for this type of rally this year. We have uh, the springs some are much better, we have uh, the rims some are uh, more narrow and uh, so the car it's much better this year. And let's see if the times will be better. That's, uh. There was far less snow this year than the one meter depth normally experienced on the Swedish in February. This was especially noticeable around Karlstadt. But the stages still had half an inch of blue ice for drivers to contend with. Practice is allowed for two weeks before the event. Speeds have to be kept below 30 miles per hour. But the roads are not closed, and so one is always likely to meet slow-moving hazards. Our cameras are to be located in this farmyard, with its sharp right left, with a nasty drop to catch those who try to straighten up the Z-band. Immediately into a lead he was never to lose was Hanno Mikula, having only his second competitive drive in the new four-wheel drive Audi Quattro. Hanno is the only driver to break seven minutes with a time of 6.56. Next up on 7.02 are Stig Blomqvist, still driving a works-prepared Saab Turbo, despite the factory's official withdrawal from motorsport. Oui. 
and Ari Vatanen in the Rothmans' escort. Pair Eklund in his Publimo-sponsored 911 Porsche is fourth on 708. Next teammate, Roar Danielson, 709. Four drivers share sixth place. Bjorn Johansson, Tenzi Arikana on his first outing for Rothman, Lassie Lampy, and Ola Stromberg. Five seconds down at tenth comes last year's winner, Anders Kula, also in Publimo Cup. Behind him, Ingvar Carlsen, BMW 323i, on 716. A second quicker than Kyosti Hammerlina. Next came Cali Grundle in the third clarion backed Saab on 719. Down at 20th was Jan Hagman, so fast on the RAC in November. His time, 7.35. Ascona 400 driver, Bengt Horsall, 28th on 742. And finally, Lassie Jonsson in a Porsche 911, destined to go only two stages before gearbox trouble caused retirement. Stage two was a 14 kilometer affair, another quarter of an hour north from Molcom. Mikola is fastest again. Vatanen is 13 seconds slower. Next, Stig Blomqvist blowing up what the Swedes call snow smoke. Johansson briefly holds fourth. Penty does 8.43 and is fifth. Danielson drops a place to sixth. And Eklund's back two places to seventh. But Kulang is six seconds quicker than the Porsche and goes up to eight. Lampe drops three places to ninth, taking 9.32, some 50 seconds slower than the Quattro. Further north still to Hagfors, 90 odd kilometers, stage seven, and the last before the rest halt. We are back at Karlstadt in a military camp on the outskirts of the town. Blomqvist has fuel injection problems and drops behind a river. Johansson has also slipped, and Eklund is sixth. is at 7 a.m. next morning, and by 9.30 the drivers are completing the 28-kilometer stage at Sunamo. Whenever Vatanen attacked, Mikola replied, and he regains 26 seconds here. is six seconds quicker than Vatanen. Auricula is in fourth place. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
and everyone sick. Johansson is eighth behind Strong. Every year, the little town of Uderholm plays host to the Swedish rally and what the Swedes describe as a winter router is carved along their lake's frozen surface. The lack of snow this year means no three-foot snowbanks to lean on. This, the 11th stage, is six kilometers long and is never exactly straight for more than 100 yards, leaving absolutely no relaxation during the four minutes it takes the leader to complete it. The cars are strangely silent, as out in mid-lake there is nothing to reflect their sound. Behind Mikola, the order is still Vatanen 404. Blomqvist 403. Auricola, avoiding a passing skier, 401. and Eklund 402. Stromberg in seventh place is with Mikula the only man to beat the four minute barrier with a time of 3.59. Followed in overall placings by Johansson 407. Danielson 402. Swedish car park races were also in action on the lake. And as Bjorn Schuning disappears towards the far horizon, the leaders are enjoying a rest halt. We asked Auricola if all was well in the Rothmans camp. 
I still have an engine problem. What sort of problem? Don't know if it could be, it's just a flat. So you've been losing time, have you? It's a little bit, yes. It's difficult. I've tried to air all the medicines. But, but. <laughs> but yesterday seemed, for the first time out in the new team, seemed uh, good for you. Yes, the first free state is all right, but very good. But I think in, uh, in the dark, when it's dark, I suppose we can go better. Good. It doesn't matter so much. So you're still in there fighting? Good. Thank you. The most northerly point of the route was Stullit, where back in the route after a few years' absence was the popular Frozen River stage. Watch Kulang struggling to find grip and compare Mikola's almost drag sprint start. He takes 3.2 seconds in little more than 50 meters. By the end, Kulang loses only 11 seconds and is second quickest on the stage, but remains fifth overall. Still second, but a slow time here puts him over a minute behind me. third quickest time, two seconds slower than Kulang. Lampe lies ten. And Carlson twelfth behind Hammerliner. And with Kali Grundle out, Nielsen is now thirteen. The run back to Karlstadt included some very long and difficult forest stages close to the Norwegian border, where the snow was the deepest seen on the whole route. Stage 15 is once again a Mikula benefit. He takes eight seconds after battle.
with support from Johansson only a minute behind him. Ekron's troubles now start to mount. He drops 30 seconds and goes back to seven. Ola Stromberg playing to the gallery as usual. Jan Hagman retired on the river stage with a blown engine. And Braw Danielson is still ninth ahead of Lampley, who is to score his first major win on the Finnish Hanky Rally three weeks later. in his Opel Escona. It's here on the 21 kilometer grass mark stage that many in the top 10 hit trouble. Vatanen is safe enough, a minute and a half behind Hanu. But Blomqvist loses over two minutes on the next stage, of which more later. Auricular is 20 seconds off the pace. And Kulang is now only a second behind. <laughs> Johansson is keeping up with Anders, the difference still being about a minute. Eklund is missing, losing two minutes and three places with a puncture. And Stromberg takes over seventh place. Danielson loses 30 seconds in the stage and has to share his newfound eighth place with the ever-consistent Lampe. That leaves Eklund back in tenth. In the beginning was good, but then we have a two puncher, so we must change the tires in the state. And this is not time in Swedish rally. I won the longest state, I lost all spikes in the back tires. I lost, I think, minimum two minutes just for these bloody tires. Was that particular to the Porsche, or did everybody oh, lose the stuff? No, stunt, uh, all the other drivers have the spikes, so they, I think the Porsche was too heavy, and it was some gravel in the beginning and this destroyed the tires. Yes, yeah, so your studs went quicker than anybody yes, else's. It's too heavy in the back. It's Porsche. Tell me about the car you were driving, a Porsche 911. Oh, it's uh, the same car from I used in Thousand Lakes for two or three years to back. Mm -hmm. And it's a uh, very good car. This is my own Porsche. Hamalina is 11, but rolls two stages further on and he calls it a day. Carson's going out too. He bends the steering arm on the next stage and he doesn't make the rest halt in Karlstadt. Nielsen loses four minutes in this stage and drops five places to 18. Danielson struggling round with a broken dip, all of which means Thorsell gets back to Karlstadt in 12th place. Kulang services.
and the action resumes at 3 a.m. Sunday morning. By dawn, they've reached the last stage near Suna, nine and a half twisty kilometers. For the first time in front of our cameras, Hanu is not the quickest car through the stage. In fact, he's so much in command, fifth fastest is good enough to secure a win by almost two minutes from Ari Vatanen. Seen here setting the fastest time on the last stage. Third, Penty Auricula, first time out with his new team and just under two minutes behind. managed to hold off Stig Blomqvist and keep fourth place by 25 seconds. Stig, having been back to sixth with his troubles last evening, put up a determined drive through the night and at least managed to split the opals and beat Bjorn Johansson by just 18 seconds. from Ola Stromberg's misfortune. Ola broke a drive shaft on the longest stage of the rally, the 48 kilometers sting in the tail, and lost six minutes. He recovered to fend off Per Eklund by a mere eight seconds. Eklund, though on ninth, was a comfortable three and a half minutes ahead of Soren Nielsen in the Datsun 160J. The Quattro was unbeatable on ice and snow, but how much of an advantage would it have in the rough Portuguese forests or the plains of Kenya? Only time will tell. In the meantime, Michele and Monte Carlo winner Jean Ragnotti share the world championship lead with, by virtue of his two fourth places, Anders Kulad. With last year's winner, Kulad, happy to have finished, but surely wishing it had been ahead of those Rothman's escorts and in the championship lead. Sting, showered by snow from a departing helicopter, contemplates a troubled run to fifth place. We asked Per Eklund for a last word on Hanu's performance. I'm not sure, man. I think it is. One time uh, Ari was, I think, 28 seconds and something after Hanno. Mm. Then the next day, Hanno <laughs> take 20 seconds again. Right. So I think he have a little more to give. Yes. Maybe so. not much, but enough. Yes, we, we check many stages just for the fun to check mm. the time from all drivers. And normally, Hanno was five seconds faster than all others. Yes. Sometimes I was three seconds after him. I have a very good start in the Porsche.